Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. This Bible is the Word of God. I am what it says I am. I can do what it says I can do. I believe what it says about me. And I obey what it says to me. This is my roadmap for success. The instructions I need to fulfill my purpose are contained in my word. Father, thank you for my word. Amen. You may be seated. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Glory to God. Hallelujah. 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 Glory. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. What a mighty God. What a mighty God we serve. He's a mighty God. He's a mighty, mighty God. Amen. He's mighty. He's a mighty God. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Do you know what time it is? No, it ain't time to give. <laughs> That's the name of the title of my message. What time is it? <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Y'all good, though. Y'all good. All good. <laughs> uh, it's time to arise and to shine. What time is it? Come on. What time is it? All right. I got to get that in, down on the inside of you. That is a time to arise and to shine. Glory to God. That's what time it is. How many of you know that uh, we're in a supernatural time? We're in a supernatural time. Amen? How many of you know that God already knew what the court, Supreme Court was, decision was going to be? How many of you know God already knew that? That it didn't shock him. He didn't fall off the throne because of that happening. How many of you know that? And so what I want to do today, God, it was, it's so many things going through my spirit until I'm just going to allow God to speak to his people today. Amen. I'm not going to be moved by, you know, whether I'm political, correct or whatever, whatever. I'm just going to let God be glorified. Amen. And so God knew that the Supreme Court was going to make this decision. And I want you to make a, that's why I, I, I let's, let's turn to Romans. Romans chapter 1, glory to God, hallelujah, thank you Jesus, thank you Lord God, hallelujah. Father God, I just thank you for your word today, Lord God. Father, I thank you that the word of God is going to be planted in good soil, Lord God. It's going to bring forth good fruits, Lord God. And Father God, I thank you right now, Lord God, that I humble myself, Lord God, to be used for your glory, Lord God. And Father God, I ask you, Lord God, to speak through me today, Lord God. Use me for your glory today, Lord God. Father God, I want to decrease, and I want to allow you, Lord God, to increase. And Father God, I thank you, Lord God, that I hear you clearly, Lord God. And uh, Father, I will speak what you tell me to speak. And Father, I give you the praise, and I give you the glory for it. In Jesus' name, amen. And in Romans chapter 1, we're going to read verse 16 and verse 17. Let's read it together. Verse 16, Romans 1, verse 16. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. Let's just stop there. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. You need to start saying that to yourself and you need to say it out loud. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. For therein, where therein what? The gospel is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. And so what I want to encourage you today is that you can't, in this season that we're about to walk in, 
You can't be afraid and you can't be ashamed of the gospel. You got to know the good news and you can't be ashamed to open your mouth and decree the good news. And so uh, some we were talking, me and a pastor friend of mine was talking about this. And uh, I was telling her that, you know, I, I, I don't, you know, I re realized that, you know, when, when the devil seemed like he didn't want a battle, that's when the body of Christ need to get stronger than ever before because God got a plan. Yeah. Come on, I need you to understand it ain't time for you to run and hide and go to crying. It's time for you to shine. Yeah. Glory to God. And so we need to know the word of God, and you need to know why you stand on what you stand on. Amen? And so let's go down to verse 24. It says, now you start talking about corruption, you know, and everything like that. So people doing whatever in their vain imagination and everything. And so it says now, and they professing in 24, it said, professing themselves to be wise become fools. How many of you know there were some fools the other day that signed that? Come on, we done, let's be real. There were some fools. They thought they were wise, but they were really fools. Okay, in verse 24 it says, Wherefore God also gave them up to uncleanliness through the lust of their own hearts to dishonor their own bodies between themselves who changed the truth of God into a lie and worship and serve the creature more than the creator who is blessed forever. For this cause God gave them up unto vile affection. For even their women did change the natural use into that which is against nature. Come on, somebody. And likewise also the men, leaving the natural use of the woman, burn in their lust one towards another. Men with men, working that which is unseemly, and receiving in themselves that recompense of their error, which was meat. And even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a what? to do those things which are not convenient, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, debate, deceit, maliciousness, whispers, backbiters, haters of God, despiteful, uh, boastful, inventors, proud of evil things, disobedience to parents. How many of you know all of that's going on today? Every bit of it is going on today. But what I want you to notice now is that in the middle of God talking about homosexuality and lesbianism, God said, being filled with all unrighteousness, fornication, wickedness, covetousness, envy, murder. He didn't just talk about the homosexuals and the lesbians. He talked about sin. And so that's what me and my friend was talking about, why the body of Christ is cutting up. The body of Christ needs to get rid of sin. <laughs> it's easy to talk about somebody else. But I tell you what, it is as much sin in the house of God as it is in the world. Come on, somebody. And so know this, that you know, let me, let me, let's go a little bit further. Let me read this to you. Glory to God. I want to help somebody up in here today because we're going we gonna to get delivered. 1 Corinthians chapter 6. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. I saw one man. Oh, I ain't going to say what I saw. But anyway, <laughs> glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. In 1 Corinthians chapter 6, and we're going to start reading in verse 9. It says now, know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? Know ye not that the unrighteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God? The unrighteous now. It said, be not deceived. Church, don't be deceived. Neither fornicators, idolaters, adulterers, <laughs> adulterers, and that word is effeminators, which is a man trying to act like a woman. No abusers of themselves with mankind. No thieves, no covetous, no drunkards, 
nor revelers, nor extortioners, nor inherit, shall inherit the kingdom of God. So God didn't just hawk on homosexuality. God is going to deal with sin. God is going to deal with sin. And let me tell you something. It's not God for us to walk out of love with people. The homosexual is not God for us to walk out of love with them. That means if I walk out of love with the homosexual, I got to walk out of love with you with your lying self. Come on, let's be real. God say, men and women of God are going to have to preach the word of God like never before. And we can't compromise the word of God to make people feel good. Sin is sin. Fornication is wrong. Adultery is wrong. Lying is wrong. Backbiting is wrong. It, it's wrong. It's wrong. It's a sin. And God is not, you, there is no place in God's kingdom for that. That's the word of God. Didn't we just read that? All right, we just want to make sure that we establish the word of God. Because let me tell you something. That's why I believe that God has been preaching in this house about John, about getting rid of uh, 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 purging ourselves. And, and purging ourselves, getting hooked up with the vine, and allowing God to cut off of us things that is not right. Because God wants us to rise and to shine. And we cannot arise and shine as long as we got all this baggage holding on to us. We got to quit hiding sin and we got to expose ourselves before God and tell God that we want it gone out of our lives. Yeah. Glory to God. That's the way we're going to arise and we're going to shine. Because like I said, this is going to be the finest hour for the body of Christ. And, uh, you know, you can see that in the word of God. Every time, man, the, the leadership jumped out of their position and they took God's place. The men of God that stood up for God, God showed himself strong and mighty in their lives. And that's why we got to know that our lives are in the right order with God. Because God want to show himself strong and mighty in our lives. It's going to come a time that Pastor and I may be locked up because we refuse to marry two men and two women. We're not going to marry two men and two women. I don't care how you threaten me. I don't care how you go to the cops. We're not marrying two men and two women because it's an abomination to God. And so anything, God say, hate what I hate and love what I love. And so we're going to love the word of God. I don't care if we have to go to jail. We're going to love the word of God. Amen. We're going to go to jail singing, I shall not be moved. Glory to God. We are not going to compromise the word of God to please no man. Amen. But what I want to encourage this body, you can come to the jail and you can pick it all you want to. But I would prefer you to do like they did for Peter. I would prefer you to get a prayer group. And I would prefer you to start praying like you done lost your mind. Glory to God. And you're going to see an earthquake. You're going to see God move like never before. We got to get in order so God can move in this season. <laughs> I see it, baby. I see it. I see God moving. God going to push shut the mouths of the lion. Because men and women of God is going to stand on the word of God no matter what it look like, no matter what the devil say. I don't care if the president is for it. I don't care. It's still sin. It's still wrong. Glory to God. Hallelujah. And that's what you got to be saying. I don't care who said it. I don't care who's doing it. It's wrong. Glory to God. I'm not going to compromise my stand with God. If I got to please somebody, I'm going to please God. Come on, somebody. I need you to rise up, and I need you to come alive on the inside of you, and you need to know what you believe because you're going to have to make a decision. Are you going to stand on the Lord's side or are you going to be over here on this side? You're going to have to make that decision. Amen. And so I was reading in the word of God. This is why I know, you know, if God done it once, he'll do it again. And so in the book of Daniel, you know, when they, 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 the man built his statue and he said, everybody got to bow. Everybody got to bow. And so, okay, the, the, the three Hebrew boys, they said, we ain't bowing. We ain't bowing. We don't supposed to bow to nobody but God. 
We are not going to bow. We're not going to bow, King. You can throw us in or you don't throw us in. Either way, we're not going to bow. And so because they stood, the, 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 the king threw them in and they turned up the fire hot, seven times hotter. In other words, I know I'm going to burn you up. But the man stood up and he looked. He said, now, you know, we, didn't we throw three men in there? I see a fourth man like the son of God. <laughs> you can't mess with God. <laughs> when God want to get a point across, people, God's going to get that point across. I don't care who try to do against him. And so that I believe that's the season that we're about to walk in where a man is going to be saying what they believe, but we're going to say what God says. And God going to see, you, we're going to see the glory of the Lord in this earth like never before. So that's why I want to encourage you today. Get in position for a miracle. Get in position to see God move like never before. And if you hear that we've been locked up, get a prayer meeting. Call a prayer meeting. Call it real fast. And then I want you to just go to praying. Go to praying, God, we want to see a miracle. We want to see a miracle. We want to see a miracle. They must be out and they must be out. To, don't tell him how to bring us out. You just say, God, you do it the way you want. <laughs> oh, Jesus. Because I believe that may be what happened to Peter. And when they, he showed up, they didn't believe it. Because they probably told God how they wanted to see Peter come out. But God brought Peter out the way God want to bring Peter out. And so just pray that God bring us out. Amen. And you just take your hands off the how and the when and the how. <laughs> Wait. Amen. Just leave that alone. Leave that to God. Amen. And so I want you to get ready. That's why God has been telling us to arise and shine for the light has come. And the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. The rise and shine. Rise and shine. It's the season for the body of Christ to rise and to shine for the light has come the glory of the Lord it's not by accident that God is coming in this place and setting upon us he's doing that for a reason don't see that is oh oh I tell you the presence of God is there no the presence of the Lord is here for a reason God want to change our hearts God want to change our hearts I'll say that to you again God want to change our way of thinking my God, you know, God been speaking to me about thinking like he think and, and responding the way he respond. Because most of the time we respond according to our flesh. And we make decisions according to the natural. But the way God, you know, God make decisions according to the way he thinks. <laughs> Glory to God. Glory to God. Glory to God. And during this season, during this season, we need to release, we need to ask God to release another level of forgiveness in our lives. Another level of forgiveness. I, I need you to understand this because some of your, your uh, ace boom coons going to do something and going to say something that's going to offend you. And you're going to have to make a decision. Because, you know, while we are coming out, <laughs> uh, it's coming out parties. Now, it's coming out, everybody coming out. And somebody you know come going to come out. <laughs> and they're going to say something that you feel like slapping them for. You, you got to be crazy. But you can't do that. You got to forgive them and you got to love them because their minds are messed up. Their minds messed up. And so it's the love of God. It say the goodness of God is what leads man to repentance. It's not you yelling at them and cussing them like they acting. No, we got to get in love. And so during this season, that's what God said to me. God said to me, Selena, he said uh, a couple months ago, it's a couple months now, God been dealing with me about forgiveness. And I've been forgiving people like I lost my mind. And, and uh, one, one of my family members, you know, really was working on my last nerve, last, last, last nerves. And so anyway, I really didn't want to forgive them. I really didn't want to forgive them, you know, because number one, they never came back and apologized to me for what they had done to me. And so I really didn't, <laughs> somebody saying, what they do, what they do, I'm not going to tell you, it ain't your business, it ain't your business. <laughs> and so anyway, I wanted, I wanted to get them, you know, that old spirit tried to come back in me. And so God told me, God, God took me to the, uh, to, the, to the shed, 
I'm talking about the spiritual shed. He didn't take me to, to beat me or anything like that. He took me, you know, to the shed to uh, uh, get me to understand the season that we're walking in now, you can't afford to hold unforgiveness against nobody. He said, because before you turn around, somebody else is going to be able to offend you. Somebody else is going to be done hurt you. And so you can't afford to hold on to nobody. You got to let everybody go. No matter what they do to you, you got to let them go. And so since God been dealing with my heart like that, how many of you know that what pastor do to me don't even affect me no more? I, I, I don't even, it don't even cross my mind to get in unforgiveness with the man. We, I, I'm serious. We're, he can say, he can do, and he's a sweet man. Y'all know he's just as sweet as he can be, but, you know, he can really get on your nerves. But uh, anyway, I don't even allow that to affect me anymore. I just love the man. I just love you so much, baby. He knows I just loves him, and I, I just ignore the rest of the stuff. Amen. And that's where you're going to have to get. You're going to have to just love people, and you're going to have to let go of the other stuff. Amen. Because people be his people. People be his people. And people hurt people. Glory to God. Sometimes knowingly and sometimes unknowingly. But you still got to let them go either way. It doesn't matter whether they're doing it knowingly or unknowingly. You still got to let them go. Why? Because in this season of arising and shining, I can't afford nothing to mess up what God want to do. And I can't afford, you know what? A lot of times when you're dealing with unforgiveness and bitterness and anger and stuff like that, you spend so much time meditating on this stuff. But I can't afford to meditate on stuff like that because God trying to download something in my spirit and I can't get it because there's a, a, a blockage. And so that's why God wants us free. So when he try to download something to us, we'll be able to get it. But if we're not clean, if we're not clear, if we're not pure, that means something going to block it. And then we're wondering why God can't get nothing to us. Why can't I hear from God? Because you got so much junk in your head. You got junk in your heart. And so we got to let go of this stuff. Look, I'm talking about a rise and a shine. What time is it? What time is it? Okay. And so that's why I'm telling you. I'm telling you what God has told me to tell you. That it's our season to arise and to shine because the light of God has fallen upon us. And so we got to be different. You know, already we are different in the city. You know, people are wondering, how did they get that building? They're already wondering that. How did that little church get that building? The big churches that went over there and tried to get that building. But God saw fit. Why? Because he's a shining on us. He's shining on us, people. And so remember now, when we get over there, we can't let him down. We can't let God down. God trusted us. God trusts us. And so because him trusting us, we got to give God our best. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Sarah, you can't cuss them out at school no more. Why? Because you represent God. Okay, Sarah, don't curse them people. Yes, bless them, but don't curse them. Glory to God. I'm just messing with Sarah. Glory to God. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. And so that's why, you know, I want you to look at yourself. I really do, though. I want you to really look at yourself. And I want you to see what's, what's blocking. What's blocking? You can't get where you want to with God. Block, look, 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 look in yourself and say, well, what's blocking me? What sin is in my life? Or just what habit? Because sometimes habits can cut you uh, <laughs> Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. See, and that's one thing, you know, I realized that God is getting rid of me in my life. It's all my pet peeves. See, I had some pet peeves that I said, that ain't no sin. You know, that's okay. But God said, it got to go. <laughs> it got to go. It got to go. It got to go. You know, it's okay for me to get mad. You know, it's okay for me to get mad. God said, yeah, it's okay for you to get angry, and, but you can't sin. It's one thing to get angry, but don't sin while you're getting angry. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And so those are, there are areas in our lives that we're going to have to get rid of. And, and during this uh, process that we're walking through, you're going to have to, you know how the three, Daniel and the three Hebrew boys, the king was going to give them his meat and his wine. And they said, no, I can't take that. 
uh, that uh, we'll be defiled. We can't, we can't take that. From the natural standpoint, you know, just reading that, and you think about it, well, is it the king's uh, meat and his wine? What could be wrong with that? Everybody else is taking it. Why can't we just go ahead and take it? But Daniel said, excuse me. I need you to give us something else. We don't want to be defiled by the king's meat and, and wine. And so there is going to be a time that some things is going to look okay. But your spirit is going to tell you, don't you participate. And let me explain it to you. It's going to be some Christians doing it. There are some things right now Christians are doing, and it's okay. But my spirit say, no, you're not going to do that. And so some places I don't go. When some people invite me, and I know they're going to be doing certain things, I don't go. I check things out before I just get up and go. I don't care if it's top dogs, low dogs, no dogs. <laughs> because I got to protect my spirit. I got to protect my spirit. You know why? why? Because if you start hanging around, Stuff like that. Before you know it, I'm going to drink some wine. Come on, come on, come on, come on. I'm, uh, well, so-and-so and so-and-so -and -so is drinking wine. They don't think nothing about drinking wine. And I'm going to drink me some wine. So do you realize that there are preachers that God delivered is, is hooked on alcohol now? Why? Because they start sipping with their friends. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. So now look at me now. Look at me. God delivered me from alcohol. <laughs> And so now, wouldn't it be something that, you know, I start hanging with the buddies. And they say, a little wine ain't going to hurt for the stomach's sake. Just a little wine for the stomach's sake. And then all of a sudden, I start acting, give me some, uh, what, what was that it used to be? I used to love that Boone's Farm. Yeah, give me some of Boone's Farm. Where the Boone's Farm at? And then before I know it, uh, uh, give me some vodka. And before I know it, I'm hooked on alcohol again. And, and now y'all got to pray me through again. When God had delivered me. But I went back and started playing in the territory. See, and that's what happened a lot of times. God deliver us. And then we go play back in the territory because people start telling you it's okay. It may be okay for pastor to do that. Pastor didn't have an alcohol problem. But if you had a problem, you got a gambling problem. What it look like? Every time you turn around, I'm going to the casino to eat. I'm going to eat. And then after a while, you start passing by the machine, and next thing you know, you're putting something in the slot machine. And the next thing you know, I'm going back and play a little bit more, baby. You're putting it in the slot machine. And before you know it, you're hooked on gambling again. God had delivered you. And so those are the kind of things I'm telling Christians, stay away from. God, in this season and in this hour, you can't afford to be hooked on man's way of doing things. Because whatever you serve, remember now, when you start serving sin, sin is your master. Y'all hear me? What sin are you serving? Because if you're serving sin, that's your master. But if you're serving God, that means when God speaks to me, that means I can do what God say. But if I'm serving, trying to serve two masters, and I'm over here drunk on alcohol, and God need me at that season, I can't do nothing for God because I'm drunk over here. Mm. And so, come on, y'all. Arising and shine. It's time to arise and to shine. For the light has come. For the glory of the Lord has risen upon us. The glory of the Lord has risen upon me, us. And I'm going to let my light shine wherever I go. I'm going to be a child of the almighty God. No matter who I am around, I'm going to be a child of the almighty God. And just like Pastor Cheryl was saying yesterday, when you get in that place where you are allowing God to be God in your life, you can walk into the grocery store and people are asking you, who are you? 
you know, wh what was your name? What, what, what is it about? It's something about, it's something on your face. It's something about you. For the longest time, they told, people told me who I was, and I didn't know, I didn't know it. They told me, you know, at one time, uh, and I, maybe still, I don't know, but the teachers used to dress real good. And so every time I would show up somewhere, they automatically thought I was a teacher. They would say, you're a teacher, aren't you? <laughs> yeah, because I look like a teacher, I guess. And so now it, it's a different story. They, they ask me, they, it's like they don't know who I am. They just want to know who I am. Who are you? It's something about you. It's something about that smile of yours. What is it? And I get a chance to tell them, it's about Jesus. It's Jesus. It's Jesus. And so that's where we got to get. We got to get to the place where we just get saturated. We get saturated with Jesus. And that way when we show up, what happened? Jesus shows up. Glory to God. I, I, you know, I don't have no problem. I, I just love it. I, I love talking to people that are down. Because let me stay with you just for a few minutes. I'm going to have you laughing. Why? Because God is a God of joy. And God wants joy to flow out of us to other people. When, when sadness hits you hit and come in your, uh, your territory, you need to have enough joy on the inside of you where you can help that person to come into joy. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. And so that's where we got to go to, arising and shining. For the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen up on me. You need to stand before the mirror. Lift your hands up. Look at yourself. Arise and shine, Selena, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen up on you. Oh, my God, everywhere I go, people are going to see the glory of the Lord. Everywhere I go, I am addicted to the glory of the Lord. Glory to God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord God. I felt it. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. I need y'all to start saying, uh, uh, arise and shine for the light has come. Oh, y'all don't believe that. Y'all don't believe that. Y'all don't believe that. No, no, I don't even believe you believe it. So how you going to confess, or say, uh, confess somebody else that the glory is on you? Is the glory on you? Is it? Arise and shine. <laughs> okay, let me give you another chance. Let me hear you say it. Arise and shine. <laughs> Arise and shine. For the light has come. For the glory. Of the, Lord of the Lord is risen, is risen upon me. Upon me. Arise, Arise and shine, and shine. For, the for the light has come, has come. And, the and the glory of the Lord, of the Lord has, risen has risen upon me. Upon me. Lord, I thank you. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your glory. I thank you for your glory, Lord God. I thank you for your glory. 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 I thank you, Lord God. I thank you. I thank you. I thank you for your glory arising upon me, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. I thank you, Lord God. Sinners, Lord God, are going to be drawn to me, Lord God. Because of your glory. I thank you, Lord God, for your glory. Your glory, your glory, your glory shall be seen. Your glory shall, your glory shall, your glory shall, Lord God, be seen upon me, Lord God. I thank you for your glory. 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 I thank you, Lord God. Thank